For a pediatric case of behavior problems or failing school grades, using our mnemonic old cards will note the onset or when did you first notice your child's misbehavior or failing school grades. For the location in a case of misbehavior, we'll want to specify and know if it's occurring primarily at the home or in the school as well. For the duration, we'd like to ask mom or dad if it's been constant since it started or if it occurs more intermittently with periods or semesters of good behavior or good grades. Next, we'll want to ask about the progression. Does your child's misbehavior or failing school grades appear to be getting worse? Or if there has been no progression, we'll also want to state that in our patient note to show we've asked. To help characterize a case of misbehavior, we'd like to ask mom or dad about the child's mood, including if it's more temper tantrums or if it also involves violence. And for a case of school grades, we'd like to ask a little bit more about the academic subjects and to see if there's a social component as well aggravating and alleviating factors and treatments tried, such as therapy or tutors. In all pediatric patients, instead of a physical exam, we're going to use our mnemonic BITTER to remind us to ask about the birth history, immunizations, developmental history, diet, education, and to reflect with the parent. For all cases, let's order a physical exam, mental status exam, CBC, serum electrolytes, TSH-T4, and a urine toxicology. In age-appropriate behavior, our supporting points include behavior problems, and these will primarily be tempered tantrum seen at a younger age, and the location will be at home, with normal behavior at school, and will typically find no change in sleep or weight. Both hypo and hyperthyroid can cause behavior problems and failing school grades. In hypothyroid, we'll see hypoactive child that's fatigued and has a depressed mood and generally not motivated and if they're not motivated they're not likely to be doing well in school and we could ask mom or dad if they've also noticed any weight gain cold intolerance or constipation and on the flip side in hyperthyroid we can note a child that's hyperactive has a lot of anxiety insomnia they can't sleep and they're similarly not likely to be doing well in school and we'll ask mom or dad if they notice any weight loss heat intolerance or diarrhea in major depressive disorder we'll use our mnemonic siggy caps to ask the parents about any change in sleep, decreased interest, feelings of guilt, low energy, including not going out with friends or doing their sports or extracurriculars, trouble concentrating, including failing school grades or not getting their homework done. And in a typical depression, we'll note a decreased appetite and decreased weight. And in an atypical depression, we could actually see an increased appetite and increased weight. Psychomotor agitation, including restlessness or restfulness and suicide ideation. The duration is for greater than two weeks, and we typically need to see five out of the nine criteria, though in an OSCE, we don't need to have all five to list our differential if we are concerned enough. And SIGI caps are only eight criteria, the ninth criteria being depressed mood. And interestingly, in high yield, either decreased interest or depressed mood are one of the criteria we typically need to see. So even if mom or dad doesn't report depression in our child, a decreased interest alone would be enough for us to list this as our differential. And if we are concerned enough, we'd like to add a PHQ-9 and a Beck depression inventory. In substance abuse and the common manic drugs involved are cocaine, inhalants, or marijuana, we can note behavior problems or failing school grades, and we'll use our mnemonic dig fast to note the manic symptoms, including distractible, irresponsible, they're grandiose, have a flight of ideas, agitation, not sleeping, and very talkative. In an adjustment disorder, we'll see behavior problems or failing school grades. There will be a stressor, divorced parents, or a new school within three months. In attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, this includes both inattentive, formerly known as ADD, so we're not going to list in our differentials a separate diagnosis of ADD, and also hyperactive. And though for an OSCE, we don't need to have to specify the type. So attention deficit hyperactive disorder is enough for our differential. We'll see behavior problems or failing school grades. The onset is less than 12 years old. And our child can be inattentive, including a description by the parents that they're in their own world or trouble paying attention, disorganized, losing things, or hyperactive. They're always on the go. They fidget. They're interrupting. They can't wait. And Typically or classically, it's greater than two settings, at home and in the school. And finally, for a conduct disorder, we'll have behavior problems or failing school grades, skipping school, shoplifting, and violence.